What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot of tropics to cover today. We have Hurricane Lee that is bearing down on New England right now, already starting to bring some outer impacts to New Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, pretty much all of New England at this point, as well as Atlantic Canada. We have uh, tro- we have now Tropical Storm Margo that's kind of still meandering over in the Atlantic, starting to bring, uh, bring some of its outflow to the Azores Islands. We now have newly designated Tropical Depression 15 that is currently gradually organizing and is expected to be quickly strengthening. And we have a new area of interest that could be down the road a potentially serious impact, serious threat rather, uh, to the Lesser Antilles. So that's what we have going on right here. We're going to go ahead and start with Hurricane Lee since that's the most Im- immediate threat to land right now. We'll show you the public advisory. Lee is a 80 mile per hour hurricane with uh, with a category one with moving north northeast at 15 degrees at 18 miles per hour now. Its minimum central pressure is 962 millibars, so it's a very large hurricane that continues to move closer and closer to New England. Hurricane force winds extend out 105 miles from the center, and tropical storm force winds extend out 320 miles from the center. Pressure is 962 according to Hurricane Hunter aircraft right now. So that's what we have going on with that. We have hurt with tropical storm warnings and hurricane watches in effect for parts of it uh, for Atlantic Canada, including New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Halifax. Tropical storm warnings from the Massachusetts Rhode Island border all the way to the U.S. Canadian border. So we'll have to continue to monitor it as time continues to progress even if this thing does not make landfall as a hurricane it's still going to be bring some very very serious impacts to a lot of new england because they are not built for hurricane activity like this hurricanes barely ever reach uh, this far north i mean we had hurricane larry but that was further to the east of new england uh brushing over nova scotia making landfall in newfoundland we had sandy back in 2012 but that was such an extraordinary storm so that's po- all point and said doesn't happen very often. We'll have to keep an eye on it for sure. However, for uh, however for now, just it's still tropical storm warnings. We'll have to wait and see how this progresses. Here's the discussion right here. Forecasted to uh, remain a Category One hurricane before becoming post-tropical, most likely uh, most likely inland as things continue to develop. It's supposed to get down to a 65 mile per hour tropical post-tropical cyclone rather in the next 36 hours. So it's continuing its transition from ma- mainly tropical to post and extra tropical. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on all this stuff that is going on. We'll show you some models of what may happen down the road from here. But that's what we have for Lee. Next one we're showing you is Margo very briefly. 65 mile per hour tropical storm. Very large tropical storm force wind area. 300 miles from the center. Pressure's 990 millibars. And it's currently making some potential impacts. And it's likely going to turn around and potentially impact the Azor Islands as a post-tropical cyclone down the road. So that's what we have going on with Margo in the subtropical Atlantic. Now we have newly designated Tropical Depression 15 that is formed in the Atlantic Ocean. Here's the situation we have for this is the first uh, ever advisory on it. Expected to become a hurricane northeast of the Lesser Antilles. Potential rapid intensification could potentially ensue with this and we'll show you how. At 11 a.m., the center is located at 14.4 degrees north, longitude 43.8 degrees west, moving northwest at 12 miles per hour, and it's expected to continue for the next few days. Maximum sustained winds are at 35 miles per hour, and the pressure is 1,007 millibars as the first advisory. It's currently having a few issues organizing near the center of circulation. However, it's mainly due to the outflow uh, shear that Margo is bringing, so... We'll have to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on. This could, this is expected to intensify at a very fast rate. It's supposed to gradually intensify over the next couple of days, but then it starts to ramp up in intensity, and the discussion shows that right here. Here's what we have. The, dis- dis- the depression, excuse me, is forecast to develop, uh, gradually intensify over the next couple of days at, at a moderate, uh, uh, as moderate un- northeasterly shear and the initial broad cyclone structure could prove a check on intensification rate. By early next week, the system is forecast to move over near-record warm sea surface temperatures for the region in light shear conditions. It probably sounds like a broken record at this point in this season, but rapid intensification is a significant possibility 
and the official forecast could be cons- uh, conservative below. The intensity is f- forecast near or ab- above the intensity consensus, leveling off at 120 hours due to gradual SSC surface temperatures cooling, yada, yada, yada. So... Here's what we have going on. It's expected to become a tropical storm in the next 12 hours. It's expected to gradually intensify into a hurricane in the next 60 hours. And then it's supposed to rapidly intensify from an 80 mile per hour hurricane into a 120 mile per hour category three hurricane in the pace of 48 hours. So we'll have to wait and see how this whole thing plays out. This could be another Lee situation because that was such a huge shock to a lot of us. So we'll have to monitor that. But this is also another threat that I am paying attention to from the National Hurricane Center. As of 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, a tropical wave is forecast to move off the west coast of Africa by the middle part of next week. Some gradual development of the system it's possible thereafter while the system moves westward in the eastern tropical Atlantic, 20% chance of formation in the next seven days. But I will say this, if they are tagging an area of interest so many days out at this point, that tells me two things. One, they are very concerned about, about this whole potential situation that's going on. And two, they are very confident that something could, something huge could happen because they did this with Hurricane Lee back in uh, back a couple of weeks ago. So everyone needs to keep that in mind as we continue through this video right here. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some model runs. We're going to show you the uh, operational European GFS and CMC as they continue to come out. Here's the 12 zero Z of the European, excuse me. Zero Z European has Lee bearing down on the uh, on New England, New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, potentially potentially making landfall near Nova Scotia around Halifax before making landfall east of the United States Canadian border while bringing lots and lots of impacts to Maine, especially. Those areas are not exactly built for hurricanes, so. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see how this whole thing plays out. Even a 70-mile-per-hour tropical storm could do quite a lot of damage. We all remember what happened with Hurricane Irene back in 2011. It moved on shore to North Carolina, made landfall. Then it moved off the coast of New Jersey, made uh, made landfall near there, and then brought a lot of flooding and a lot of impacts to Vermont. It destroyed the entire state. All the rivers started flooding. It was a huge catastrophe all around. So definitely something to monitor as we continue to look at it. Meanwhile, Margo is continuing to dissipate. And then we have this new area of of interest, the Tropical Depression 13, which will soon become Tropical Storm Nigel in the next 12 hours. Things get pretty interesting as this organizes and develops and starts intensifying at a very fast pace into a cat, potentially Category 2 or Category 3 hurricane while bringing some potentially significant impacts to Bermuda, sim- although a little bit closer than Hurricane Lee did just a couple of weeks ago. Well, it's mainly going to stay out to sea according to what the Europeans going for. However, they're also tracking this area of interest right here. There's a decent high-pressure system building up right here, 1032 millibars. That's definitely going to push this thing more to the west, especially if it continues to dive further south. So we'll have to continue to monitor it 10 days out. But now we'll go ahead and show you the GFS model. Here's the 0Z GFS. This thing makes landfall in the next 48 hours near the U.S.-Canadian border, brings a lot of impacts to Maine, pretty much what the Europeans going for. The future Nigel has this uh, has this thing intensifying at a very fast rate, however, staying east of Bermuda. And then it has this thing starting to organize and develop, brings a pressure of, no- of 1028 millibars over here. However, the GFS is also picking up on a certain Central American gyre that could organize and develop again. Keep in mind, the GFS is the only model calling for this, so I don't think this is going to be entirely accurate in my opinion, but this over here is pretty interesting. Uh, 1030 high-pressure system builds up Pretty much in, uh, pretty much in in the Bermuda High right area right there. So that could definitely push that further to the south and bring some impacts to the Antilles. And depending on how all this holds out right here, we'll have to see if we see it get some impacts, especially down the road from here. So that's what we have going on with the GFS. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the CMC model. Here is the zero Z CMC. Uh, th- this thing, Lee right here, makes landfall near Halifax and then stays in Atlantic Canada, becomes post-tropical, brings quite a bit of impacts to Maine, the same whole story. Then the future Nigel starts to develop and potentially gets a, makes a very close pass to, Ber- uh, to Bermuda right there as a 980 uh, 80s millibar system. So it's being a pretty conservative, actually, around Category 1 strength. So we'll have to see what that's uh, doing right there. And the CMC is pulling si- uh, something si- uh, similar here, right, he- uh, right here with this new area of interest. 
decent high pressures building up, and this thing is pushing further to the south. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. If you're in the Antilles, you need to start monitoring this new ta tagged area of interest. We'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. We're going to be streaming today at 5 p.m. Eastern, so you don't want to miss that, and we'll talk more about this. So that's what we have going on with that. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the best conditions that we are seeing right here. What Lee is leaving behind for the global sea temperatures is another massive cold wake that uh, Franklin built, uh, built up upon. It's basically expanding it quite a bit more. However, it's pretty much uh, the whole thing is pretty much untapped in the Caribbean, in the Gulf of Mexico, and in parts of the western main development region right here. So if that new area of interest moves due west and that high pressure system builds up, It'll still be in the best conditions that we have seen in quite a while. So we'll have to monitor that with global heat temperatures. Ocean heat content continuing to be very, very alarming, especially in the Western MDR, especially in the Caribbean Sea. So if that gyre does form, it could potentially explosively intensify if it, if no shear gets in that in its way. So that's our OHC map, and where Nigel's ex the future Nigel rather is expected to go, it's expected to move through an area of 50, then 75, then 100, then maybe up to 130 ocean heat content value right there, which could potentially help fuel its rapid intensification. However, the cold wake continues to expand uh, by Hurricane Lee right here, so we'll have to monitor how this how this whole thing plays out. But the new area of interest. Ocean heat content approaching the Lesser Antilles is cracking 150 OHC. So anything that gets close to that is potentially going to intensify. And we'll go ahead and show you the wind shear forecast with this. Well, not exactly the wind shear forecast, but the wind shear map. The wind shear across the Caribbean Sea and across the Gulf of Mexico, it's pretty solid. For now, there's not very much wind shear really stopping anything from developing. So if a gyre does end up meandering off the coast of Honduras into the, uh, into the uh, Caribbean Sea... It should have no issues organizing or strengthening at that point unless some dry air gets into it. We have Tropical Depression 15 right there. Lee's encountering some wind shear. So how this whole thing plays out, if this whole shear stuff business goes away right here and this thing moves in this new area of interest moves due west, could potentially be a very serious situation for sure. So this is all stuff we're going to have to continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. Once again, we will be streaming today at 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time once the new advisory comes out. We'll also be covering Tropical Depression 15, Tropical Storm Margo, this new area of interest. You guys do not want to miss that. We're going to have our Tropical team on Storms United come on, and it's going to be one heck of a time. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out and helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.